Hey everyone, just before I start the tutorial, there is an issue I need to address. There has been disagreement between myself and Hype Ghost over how credit has been attributed to the Final Descent manipulation. If you want to skip the speedrun drama, skip to this point in the video. When I made the tutorial on Twitch, I made this statement regarding who found the manipulation. I'm kind of just like the person that's really just making the video at the end of all the work. I haven't done any of the work for this. Uh, most of the work has been done by Ace Zephyr, who's dug around the code and figured out its manipulation, and uh, Hype Ghost has done um, uh, a bit of work into the setup, to my understanding. To clarify, Ace Zephyr found the RNG value stone can be manipulated in Bone Village. Hype Ghost found the list manipulation to set it to 154 in Cosmo Canyon and the movement afterwards. I was not aware that Hype was the one who found the Cosmo manipulation at the time I recorded the tutorial. The one exception to the movement findings is the first, tra bleh, is the first traversal of Forgotten City. Hype did a method where he intentionally bonked on a wall to slow his movement down to enter on the correct list value. Whereas when I researched this I found it easy to stop at the base of the stairs. Hype contests that I am attempting to claim credit for this. I'm not. It is a rather simple solution to ensure the manipulation is accurate and is quite easily thought of, and I never made the claim that I was the first to think of this, and that trying to make a claim for something as trivial as stop here is even necessary. In my opinion, Ace deserves a decent amount of credit for the manipulation existing as it is not possible to ensure a zero encounter final descent without it. Hype also deserves credit, and he did find the Cosmo 154 list method. However, manipulating list itself is not covering new ground as it has been done before, particularly with the old Final Descent strategy. It was just limited in its ability because Stone was not known until the Hojo fight. If you disagree with my assessment, that's fine. Feel free to do so. So, Final Descent manipulation. So, I guess before we kick off, um, a lot of work has been done on this, so I'm kind of just like the person that's really just making the video at the end of all the work. I haven't done any of the work for this. Um, most of the work has been done by Ace Zephyr, who's dug around the code and figured out its manipulation, and uh, Hype Ghost has done uh, a bit of work into the setup, to my understanding. Um, but essentially, in order to get zero encounters on the Final Descent, um, there was an old manipulation where you looked up what your RNG was uh, before Hojo, but that didn't guarantee that you got zero encounters. It kind of gave you a situation where this is like roughly where you are. However, there is a better method to do this now, and it involves starting out in Bone Village. Now, there are two RNG values that you need to manipulate in order to get uh, final descent manipulation to work. First is called list and the second is called stone. These numbers are these names are basically completely irrelevant to you um, But to start off with we're going to manipulate the stone value and in order to do that when you're on disc one uh, When you visit the bone village uh, You're going to be setting the stone value to 49 now in order to do this you need to close So this last text box you need to close on a specific in-game time value. And the in-game time values that actually work, um, the actual time values are, you need to have a second value of either 3, 19, 35, or 51 uh, when you close this text box. However, because you can't actually check your in-game time, you need to do a setup in order to establish this. So you actually want to, when you are in this section, you need to do a menu after um, leaving Gongaga because you need to put Sid in your party and move some stuff around. Now I do my own route, so this menu might look a bit different to yours, but essentially, all right, so usually it's PHS Sid into the menu. Put Sid in the back row, go into Cloud's Materia, and usually something along the lines of put Restore back on, and give Cloud both the enemy skills. At least that's my menu. 
So when you finish this menu, do the menu immediately outside of the um, outside of Bone Village, like right up against it, and then close the menu on either the value 12 seconds, 28, 44, or 56. And this should set your stone value to 49. So we'll take the 44 second. And just mash. And hopefully that, right? Yep. So example. And it works the same way for all the other in-game time values. And that will set your stone value to 49. And once you've done that, you don't need to worry about stone anymore. This is the only manipulation for the stone value. And after this, you can just progress as per normal. Etc. Etc. Okay. So the next point that you need to do a manipulation is quite a while away. It's towards the end of disc two. Yep. Okay. So when you go to Cosmo Canyon in disc two, so the next value we need to set list to one hundred and fifty-four, and. The place where you do this is uh, on this screen. List is moving uh, based on the uh, the rooster that shows the wind direction that's moving around um, right above where cloud is. Uh, that's moving back and forth based on the list value. Now, in order to get the value 154, you're going to need to count how many times the satellite dish is rotating whilst the rooster is not moving. And I'll, pro I'll show some um, visual aids in YouTube, so this will take a little while to come out on YouTube, but yeah. Um, you need to count three full rotations when the uh, wind dial has stopped moving. When, the, when you're on three rotations, you can run inside and you'll be on list value 154. Um, but it's while the dial is not moving because you will see the dial move before that. Like I'll show you on this example. I think this one exa this example is actually tried a tricky one. So stop moving, one rotation. It started moving again, so we have to go. So we're back on one rotation and it started moving again one rotation, two rotations, and it started moving again. One rotation, two rotations, three rotations, run inside. And that will put you on value 154. So you need to make sure that you're counting the rotations and it's three because there is one value that's like two and a half rotations. Um, I think that's value list value nine. Um, that's the closest one. But if it's three rotations, then you've run inside and you still do have, you have a degree of leniency after the three rotations um, to run inside. So don't feel like too pressed. It's like, oh my God, I got to go. I got to go. I gotta... Don't try and push it. It's pretty comfortable to actually make uh, one, make it in before 154 advances to the next value. So that's how you set the list value to 154. Now you have to keep you have to keep manipulating the list value for the rest of the run because list is much more variable than stone in terms of the RNG. The next point in the run where list can change, there we go, is City of the Ancients. Um, the first two screens, so this screen and the screen before it, uh, list doesn't affect it, but uh, this screen that we're on now does, and it advances quite fast. So this is the most complicated part of the setup. And the way that you do, uh, the movement is quite tricky to get to the center um, on a consistent value, and you must get this list value 
uh, on one. So when you've reached the center, the list value must equal one. If it doesn't equal one, the whole thing breaks down. It doesn't fucking work. Um, and it's possible to actually go too fast. Um, I'll show you for an example. So let's just say I go full pelt. I'm on value 208. 208 is actually the value before one in the list. And if I did this in a run, this wouldn't work at all. So there is a movement setup that you have to do. Um, you may have seen Hype Ghost's uh, version. He does like a bonk at the start. I actually prefer a different method. I'll show you mine instead. Um, so instead of doing that, I stop at the base of the stairs on the next screen. So instead of this, um, hold run right at the start and just keep holding right, uh, down right to right and get to the base of the stairs and stop. Close the text box as soon as possible, up left, and you should be on value one. That is by far the most complicated part of this manipulation. Uh, this screen does not advance the RNG. Um, at all. So I've just boosted through this to get through it as quickly as possible. But every time you go on the previous screen, you'll lose this one. List value is advanced, so you do need to match. Oh, this way. So you get the screen and you get closer. And then you'll get the fade out and Bugan Hagen will put the key in. List will advance while he's doing this. And it should, and it'll stop here. Uh, this screen does not have advancement. And you should see the value 137. And this, this FMV doesn't affect it at all, but immediately after the FMV, it does. So we'll force file it a little bit, but not too much. So the next screen loads, there's one text box, but there's also a camera transition. So you don't have to worry too much about your mashing speed. Just focus on buffering your movement with run up left to get back into the, um, to get into the next screen. And you should be on value 213. Okay. F8, we'll make a new save. And now on the way back, you can just run full, uh, just focus on efficient movement um, to get through the screen. Um, it's not super tight. You will either end up on list value 10 or 59, and it doesn't matter either way. 10 is the best case scenario if you have like perfect movement. 59 is uh, the next case. And like it literally makes no difference as to whether or not you get 10 or 59. It doesn't affect RNG in any way um, later on. So just hold left and you're going to get a cutscene where you get the phone call from Kate Sith for no slots. Mash through this dialogue. And you get this FMV. List does still advance despite the fact that this FMV is playing, but because it's always the same length, uh, it shouldn't change anything. Now, if you do get disc skips um, on in, when you're running PlayStation disc, good luck, because I have no idea how you would account for something like that. You're just gonna have to guess, basically, how much time you saved from a disc skip. So the next scene is in the Shinra headquarters. Uh, list is stable for this section, and you should see a value of 43. Okay. So when Scarlet does her little arm swish and says the sister ray, this is the last text box for the, um, Is Hada good? Chicken. What a fucking weirdo. So when you see this text box, you can buffer your upright, run upright input. So run upright to right, left, up left, left, 
down left, left, up left a little bit. And that was 59. So if you get like really clean movement uh, towards the end, you might see the value of 10 instead. That's fine. It doesn't make any difference whatsoever. And that's the City of the Ancients manipulation. The next point in the run where Lisk can advance oops, is immediately before Hojo. The Hojo fight, which I'll go into. Uh, da, 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 da. So Hojo. All right. I do believe I need to. So here you would normally do a menu, of course. Um, typically something along the lines of just a heal up and put in your battle speed back to full, which is irrelevant. Oh, this save state. So we were on 59 lists and stone 49. So this save file didn't have the manipulation in it. So we'll, we'll change that so that it does. Okay. So this screen is stable. This screen is also stable, but when you go into the uh, scene with Hojo, it does advance. But it advances fairly slowly compared to the City of the Ancient section. So you don't need to worry too much. Um, obviously mash, and like there's no movement on the screen either. But yeah, just mash through it. As long as you have a good mashing speed, you don't like miss any text boxes to a huge degree, you should be fine. So I don't give a damn about the details, this is the last text box. Hold run right to do the skip. And literally just mash through this. It's not tight. You notice earlier there was um, three sparks really close to each other. It was like spark, spark, spark. You could use that as a verification to know that your manipulation has worked. There's another three there, in fact. Um, the position of the spark, spark, spark will change depending on if you went, entered this screen on 10 or 59. But either way, you will conclude, uh, you will leave that screen on 113 uh, when you go into this battle. So, win this battle. I'll go through this battle just to show that it is one complete playthrough. I actually got first turn. I think she's dead. Yep. All right. So you might be concerned about having to mash afterwards, but the list value actually doesn't advance um, after the after the fight with Hojo. Only before. And you may see a spark at the end. That's normal. That's just the last spark running in the game's code. And so, and that's the last part where list advances on disc two. So the last section is disc three. Okay, so disc three. Now, um, let's just go back to 
values that we're supposed to be on because I don't have the manipulation set up on these save states. But we were on 113, still in 49. So um, when you enter disk three, uh, list advances on quite a few screens in the northern crater, uh, northern cave rather. So the first screen doesn't. Um, uh, you're normally doing menu, trank up, um, cloud and sid. Uh, the first screen is safe, the second screen is safe, the third screen is safe, but when you actually get inside is when you need to start paying attention. So this screen is fine, uh, this is the third screen, but the next screen list does start advancing so at that point you need to ensure that you have good movement throughout. so that list doesn't advance too far. Now, I didn't get the glitch with the save crystal to save time, but it's fine. It's not necessary. To reach that. Also, my step route uh, in these save files is really crap, but your step count will not, for no slots at least, step route doesn't affect this manipulation, just remember which direction you need to run in at the conclusion of each fight. Feel free to run anytime. Okay, so that first screen list is advancing, but the next two screens, actually, I think it might be, it's quite a few screens, I can't remember exactly how many, but this screen is safe. I take two steps here for step count. This screen is also safe, you don't need to worry. Two steps for the uh, step count. And this screen where you do the save crystal glitch is also fine. Um, there's no advancement of the list value, so... For no slots, it's left, right, 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 left. And um, before I enter left, uh, the next screen uh, does have list advancement. So make sure you put through your party, uh, your dialogue options quickly. It's one dialogue, it's one text box, second option, second option, one text box, run down and then down right. So left. Run left, one text box, down, second option, second option, one dialog box, down right. It's down to down right into right. You want to um, get into the, the top corner of that doorway. Uh, that last screen is fine. This screen does have advancement. This one here. Yeah, my step count in these save files are pretty crap. But it doesn't really matter anyway with random encounters. Random encounters don't affect list in any way, other than where you get them 
So you, you do need to be paying attention as to what direction you need to be holding. But that's the last screen um, where list advances, although there is one more section where list does advance. Um, it's not on this screen, but it's right before you start. So I actually didn't need to do that, but OK. Um, you don't actually need to heal if you're doing this manipulation and you know you're actually getting the manipulation. But anyway, there is one more section where list advances. And when you're on this screen, list doesn't advance to start off with. Um, I'll just make a quick save state here. But um, after you hear the monster like growl, list starts advancing again. So you do need to make sure that you're mashing appropriately in that section. But that's it, it doesn't advance very fast. So now this will begin to advance. Okay, so we we entered on value 150. And if I just double check the table in Hype's video, but it was on this one. So we entered on value 150. And it was hardly perfect movement um, by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, we are in the range, so um, there is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There's a 14 um, value window where you will get, um, of different list values, where you will get zero encounters. 150 is the, 150 is the 10th value, um, so it's quite... I, you could quite conceivably get better list values than that because I missed the save crystal glitch. Um, and you still have a bit of room of safety for you've got another four values after this where you can still get zero encounters. It's um, 199, 248, 41 and 90. You will also get um, zero encounters on the way down. Um, after this value that I've got in this video. So uh, all of the values that you can see where you get zero encounters are used in this manipulation. Uh, 221, although I don't even think you could get it that, um, that fast. Um, but in the realm of possibility, you could see 14, 63, 112, 161, 210, 3, 52, 101, 150, 199, 248, 41, and 90. All of those list values will produce zero encounter final descents. And just as verification so that you can see, or I'll look like an absolutely massive tool and I have no idea what I did wrong. There we go. Zero encounters. That is how it's done.